From 1801 to 1805, off the Mediterranean coast, a war raged between the United States, led by Thomas Jefferson, and Tripoli, one of the four nations that the Europeans called the Barbary States. Their practice of capturing merchant ships and holding their crews for ransom would no longer be tolerated. Hi, I'm Shay Parker and this is RTFM, the show where I teach you how to play a game and apparently learn a bit of history while we're at it. Today we're looking at the shores of Tripoli, an asymmetric two-player strategy game that casts you as either the United States military, with a little help from Sweden, or the pirate force of Tripoli and the Barbary States. As the US, you're trying to either conquer Tripoli or force the Tripolitans to sign a peace treaty and stop pirating your merchant ships. As Tripoli, you want to pirate their merchant ships, or just make their war too costly to continue. I should also mention that this is a paid tutorial video, but since I'm just teaching the game and not reviewing it, you don't have to worry about bias or anything. So, let's dive in. First things first, let's get set up. You can play this game one or two player, but I'll go over the solo mode at the end of the video. We've got two players, but as I mentioned before, this is an asymmetric game, so the setup will be a little different. As you can see, the US starts with three of these big frigates in Gibraltar, but nothing else on the map for now. You also have a few frigates in the years to come, but we'll talk about that a little later. The Tripoli player has two Corsairs in Gibraltar, as well as four Corsairs in Tripoli, along with some infantry in Tripoli, Benghazi, and Derna. We've also got some dice, 12 gold coins for Tripoli to loot, and plenty of reinforcements to build through the game, including some potential allies for both sides. Next, each player has three core event cards, which will remain face up in front of you until played. So put those out, then shuffle your respective decks, deal six cards to each player, and you're ready to start. The Shores of Tripoli is played over the course of several rounds, each representing a year, which is split into four seasons. Each season, the US player will take an action, followed by the Tripoli player, then you will move the season track forward one space. The types of actions you can take are different for the two factions, and I'll go over them in just a moment. At the end of winter, you'll move the marker back to spring, advance the year marker one space, and each player will draw six cards. You have a hand limit of eight, so discard any excess. Also, if you have any frigates in the corresponding year space, add them to the map on Gibraltar for the US or Tripoli for Tripoli. At the beginning of 1805, all of your cards will be in the discard pile, so shuffle it and form a new deck before drawing. Then, at the beginning of 1806, draw every card remaining in your draw pile, discarding as normal to meet your hand limit. So, what can you do? Well, as either faction, you can play a card as an event, following any effects and prerequisites listed on the card. Then, either place it in the discard pile, or if directed to do so, remove it from the game. These events can be quite powerful, and you'll probably be using them more than anything else, but sometimes you need to do something a little simpler. Now, both factions can discard any card in their hand for a more basic action, but what you can do is different for each side. The only restriction is that you cannot discard the core event cards. They can only be played for their events. As the Americans, you can discard a card to build a gunboat in Malta, or to move two frigates from any space to any other space. The dark circles are harbors, whereas the lighter circles are patrol zones. If you go to a harbor with enemy units, you'll start a fight, but I'll cover that later. Just know that there is a forced peace in Gibraltar, so you won't ever fight the Corsairs that start there. You should also note that you have two event cards, Treaty and Assault on Tripoli, and successfully playing one of these cards is how you win the game. The cards detail how they work, we'll talk more about the Assault on Tripoli when we get to combat, and it's important to note that neither card can be played until the fall of 1805. On the Tripolitan side, you can discard a card to build a Corsair in Tripoli, or to send the Corsairs in Tripoli on a pirate raid. As with combat, I'll cover piracy in a bit, but what you need to know is that it's how you collect gold, and the Tripolitan player wins immediately if they ever have 12 gold, or if they sink four American frigates or defeat Hammond's army, which we haven't talked about yet, but it'll show up around halfway through the game. Now, you may have noticed that I didn't describe a move action. Tripoli doesn't really go anywhere like the US does. Their concern is more about slipping past the patrols and coming back with a loot. Now, one last thing to mention before getting into the conflict is that both sides have allies that will come into play throughout the game. Sweden was already at war with Tripoli when all this started, so there are two Swedish frigates that can help patrol Tripolitan waters. Tripoli can get rid of them through their own cards, but you'll never be able to destroy them. The other Barbary states may go to war through the course of the game, and the US can attack their ships or patrol their coasts. As long as there are ships in their harbors, the allied nation is considered at war, otherwise they're at peace, which is important for the American treaty card. Okay, let's get to combat. Most combat in the shores of Tripoli is triggered by the Americans. Whenever an American frigate finds itself in a harbor with enemy ships or infantry, again, except for Gibraltar, that will start a battle. However, there are a couple different kinds of combat, and each of them has their own quirks. Let's start with naval combat, which is just ships versus ships. The American player has discarded a card to move two frigates, and they decide to go to two different places, each with enemy ships. 
Before combat starts, any gunboats they have in Malta can join in. This occurs because the U.S. initiated the fight. If they hadn't, or if the frigates moved to a safe location, the gunboats would stay where they are. Anyway, let's put one gunboat in each fight, and then we'll resolve each one separately. Naval combat plays out like this. First, both players can play a battle card. Then you roll dice based on the ships you brought. Each player allocates hits, and then all surviving U.S. ships move to Malta. Looking back at your cards, you'll see that some of them are battle cards, which can be played if their conditions are met. When playing battle cards, the attacker plays theirs first, then the defender, the effects are applied, and the cards are removed from the game. After battle cards, we roll dice. Each frigate will roll two dice, whereas Corsairs and gunboats only roll one. You can match the colors if you want, but if you need more than eight dice during a battle, feel free to use any of the other dice to fill your ranks. Ships will only hit each other on sixes, so combat is not a sure bet. After each side rolls, count up your opponent's hits and allocate them to your ships. Frigates take two hits to sink, gunboats and corsairs take one. If the Tripolitan player sinks an American frigate, keep it as a trophy, because remember, sinking four American frigates wins you the game. All other sunk ships are returned to the supply. If you apply a single hit to a frigate, it is damaged. Place it on the next year in the year track, or if it is 1806, place it back on the supply, but it's not considered sunk. Then at the end of combat, bring all remaining American ships that were involved in the fight back to Malta. So that's one kind of combat, and most of the others will follow a similar template, with just a few tweaks. Let's say you bring an American fleet to a harbor with infantry but no ships. This leads to naval bombardment. As before, you can bring in gunboats from Malta, but neither side plays battle cards. The U.S. player simply rolls an attack against the infantry as normal, removing a soldier for each hit, and then goes back to Malta. The other way to attack infantry is through Hammett's Army. After being created via the Hammett's Army event, certain event cards will allow you to move and attack with your infantry. This mostly plays out like naval combat, except that you keep it going until one side is defeated. First off, as the card says, you can bring in up to three frigates, which allows you to start things off with naval bombardment. After which, the ships go home to Malta and you start ground combat. As with naval combat, each player, starting with the attacker, can play battle cards, and then start rolling dice. Allocate hits as normal, but then if soldiers from both armies still remain, repeat the roll dice and remove casualty steps until one side is eliminated. If Hammett's army wins the fight, that city is considered captured, which will be important for certain event cards like the Treaty, which, as you'll recall, is one of only two ways the Americans can win. If the American player uses the Assault on Tripoli card, you enter a sort of hybrid form of naval and ground combat. First, you move all American ships into Tripoli, then either move Hemet's army in from Benghazi, or play send in the Marines to add three American infantry. You start with naval combat, but this time the fight will continue like ground combat until one side is eliminated. If a frigate is damaged in this fight, place it on its side, but keep it in the fight. If the Tripoli player sinks four frigates, they win immediately. If the American player wins the naval combat, damaged frigates are removed to the supply, and all remaining ships can bombard the infantry. This begins the ground combat, which plays out as normal. The winner of the attack will also be the winner of the game. The Tripolitans are less interested in direct combat. They are able to initiate fights by playing certain event cards, but mostly their goal is to win through piracy. Whenever you initiate a pirate raid, you take the Corsairs involved, move them to the patrol zone where they might be intercepted, then to the open ocean to fish for gold, and then back to their harbor. Usually this is from Tripoli, but event cards will allow you to raid with your allies as well. So let's say we're going to go thieving. We've discarded the card to raid from Tripoli, so first we move into the patrol zone. There's one American and two Swedish frigates there, and we have five Corsairs. First, the American player makes an interception roll, hitting on sixes. Unfortunately, we don't get to fight back, but if we have any surviving Corsairs, we get to move on to piracy. We can play a battle card if we want, then roll one die for each Corsair, which hits on fives and sixes. For each hit, we've captured a merchant ship and take one gold coin. And just to recap, if we get all 12 coins, we win the game. The other ways to win are if we sink four U.S. frigates or defeat Hammett's army, but those often only happen if we do well during the assault on Tripoli, or if the American player makes some pretty big mistakes, so piracy is usually the way to go. Of course, if you make it to the end of 1806 and neither player has achieved a win condition, the game ends in a draw, so try to win before that happens, I guess? And that's how you play The Shores of Tripoli as a two-player game, but stick around to learn about the solo mode. Okay, so the solo mode plays out pretty similarly to the base game, but there are a few key differences. First off, you have to play as the US. Then, during setup, the Tripoli AI player, called the T-Bot, which is delightful, gets an extra Corsair in Tripoli and two extra infantry in Derna and Benghazi. The US deck is set up the same as in a two-player game, but the Tripoli deck is going to look a little different. 
Put out the three core event cards as shown, then find the Sweden Pays Tribute card and place it to the right of these three. This is called the event card line, and it's going to determine how the T-Bot plays the game. Beneath the event card line, put out all six battle cards in any order. Then find the three solo mode cards. Place these two to the right of your event card line with a little space between them, and shuffle the second Storms card in with the rest of the Tripoli deck, which you'll place nearby. Now that we're set up, you can start your turn as you normally would. When it gets to T-Bot's turn, though, that's when things are a little different. To find out what T-Bot does, start at the leftmost card in the event line and check its requirements, which are found in the back of the rulebook. If it can be played, perform the action. If not, move to the next card. If you reach the end of the event line without playing a card, T-Bot performs the five Corsair check, either rating if there are at least five Corsairs in Tripoli, or drawing a card and checking its requirements if not. Then, after taking its action, advance the season marker and pass the turn back to the US. The same victory conditions apply for each side, so just keep playing until one side wins or you reach a draw. Now, a few quick notes about how T-Bot plays. A lot of cards that you draw are added to the event line if you can't play them. Just move the line down if you run out of space. You never reshuffle the Tripoli deck, so if there are no cards left and T-Bot needs to draw, simply perform a raid or build action instead. During battle, T-Bot will always play any battle cards whose requirements are met. And lastly, T-Bot will allocate hits in a specific way during naval combat. If the year is between 1801 and 1804, if it's the winter of 1805, or if the active event is the assault on Tripoli, T-Bot will assign hits to damage but not destroy its frigates. Then it will sink Corsairs and will only sink frigates if there are no other options. During 1806 or the first three seasons of 1805, T-Bot will just assign hits to Corsairs first and then frigates next. And that is how you play the Shores of Tripoli. Thank you so much to Forge Circle Games for commissioning this rules video. If you are a publisher or designer interested in hiring RTFM to make a tutorial for your game, you can find my contact info in the About section of RTFM's YouTube channel. And to everyone else, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!